variation. In this lesson, we'll look at the science and engineering practices of constructing explanations and designing solutions, engaging in argument from evidence, and obtaining, evaluating, and communicating information. Our cross-cutting concepts are patterns, cause and effect, and structure and function. Phenotype. A phenotype is the set of observable characteristics of an organism, the physical traits of them. The development of phenotype depends on the genome of the organism, the organism's interaction with the environment in which it lives. So a phenotype equals the genotype or genome plus the interaction with the environment. The genome is the complete set of genetic material in an organism. Examples of features that contribute to a person's phenotypes include eye color, hair color, height, shoe size, weight, nose shape, and a number of other characteristics. So can you name other features that contribute to phenotype? Variation. Variation is the difference in characteristics between individuals of a population. Variation can occur due to genetic causes. These are differences in the genes an individual has inherited. This is known as genetic variation. Environmental causes. Differences in the environmental conditions in which an individual has developed. The overall variation between individuals is due to a combination of genes and the environment. Discontinuous and continuous variation. Features that show variation can be split into two types. Discontinuous variation is variation that can be described by distinct categories. Each category is a different variant of a particular characteristic. An individual in a population can only belong to one category. An example of a type that shows discontinuous variation is blood type. An individual can only belong to one blood group, A, B, AB, or O. Continuous variation occurs when a variant can fall somewhere within a range of values between two extremes. Unlike discontinuous variation, continuous variation can be measured and given a numerical value. Height, for example, shows continuous variation. This is because height can take any value between two numbers, the smallest and the tallest possible heights. Traits that show continuous variation are often controlled by multiple genes and their interaction with the environment. Genetic variation and mutation. There is usually ex extensive genetic variation within a population of a species. Mutation is a change in the structure of DNA. All genetic variation arises from mutation, which is continuously occurring. Mutations can be caused by environmental factors, including radiation and some chemicals. Mutations can also occur spontaneously, often due to errors in DNA replication or the movement of chromosomes during cell division. So consider this. What differences might occur if we were to have a mutation in a body cell, one of the cells that makes up our body, versus a mutation inside of a gamete or a sex cell like the sperm or the egg. Mutations in body cells cannot be passed on to future generations, whereas a mutation in a gamete, the sperm or the egg, can be passed on to the next generation. Most mutations have no effect on phenotype. However, 
Some mutations do affect an individual's characteristics and can do so in either a beneficial or harmful way. Rarely does a mutation determine phenotype. This is because most features are the result of multiple genes interacting. Sometimes a mutation that affects phenotype can make an individual better suited to its environment. This can lead to a relatively rapid change in a species through natural selection. Natural selection requires variation in heritable traits, genetic variation, to occur. Individuals with phenotypes that make them well suited to their environment are more likely to survive and produce offspring. As a result, the genes of these individuals are more likely to be passed on to the next generation. Genetic variation and sexual reproduction. Many features of an individual are influenced by genes inherited by sexual reproduction. Offspring never inherit the same genes as either parent. This is because during fertilization, the male and female gametes fuse, and the genes they carry combine to form a new combination of genes. Gametes do not contain all the genes of a parent. They only contain half. This means that each gamete can contain a different combination of the parent's genes, which can then be passed on to the offspring. The conditions in which an individual develops can also affect phenotype. This produces variation. Can you name some environmental factors that can influence an individual's phenotype? Things like diet, illness, exercise, injury, education, stress. Any of these can contribute to an individual's overall phenotype. So which characteristic do these factors affect? Acquired characteristics. A feature resulting from the interaction between an individual and their environment is called an acquired characteristic. Acquired characteristics arise during an inv individual's lifetime. They cannot be inherited because they do not have a genetic basis. Can you think of any acquired characteristics? Maybe you have some. Things like tattoos, scars, or piercings may be acquired characteristics that you got from the environment. Genes, environment, or both. What causes variation in each of these characteristics? The blood group. Maybe genes only? Body mass. Maybe the environment and genes. Because if I'm going about lifting, my body mass may be higher than genes alone. So exercise might contribute. Fingerprints. Probably only genes. Skin color. Most likely. This is controlled by genes, but maybe by spending a lot of time in a particular environment, my skin may end up darker or tanner because of my actions. So maybe both. Earlobe shape. Genes only. Hair color. Again, leading to the amount of sun that I get on any particular day, it might lighten or darken my hair color. Height, maybe both. If I don't get adequate nutrition, my height might suffer. Dimples, probably only from genes. Intelligence, well, I can carry certain genes for intelligence, but ultimately, if my environment doesn't allow me to learn, maybe my intelligence does not get high enough. Nose shape, well, 
mostly jeans, but I suppose you could take a book upside your nose from a sibling, and that might distort your nose shape. Muscle mass, probably genes and environment. Left-handedness, this could just be my genes, but I suppose if I was forced to write with my left hand, maybe I would end up with a situation where I was able to write with my left hand. And st cystic fibrosis, maybe just my genes. As you heard, I debated with myself on a lot of these different ones. It was intended to focus on the relative importance of genes and the environment in developing certain characteristics. Scientists have been studying the relationship between genes and the environment to identify the phenotypes that people exhibit. There is still much discovery to be done.